Hey everybody, uh, this is going to be my first YouTube video, maybe, if I don't delete this. Uh, basically, I'm going to be doing movie reviews. I just watched the first movie I'm going to review right now, which is Django Unchained by Quentin Tarantino. Now, I'm no movie critic, I just love to watch movies. I never worked in a movie theater. I've taken a couple film classes in school, but by all means, I am no connoisseur. I'm I'm just your average person who likes to watch movies. Um, I love Tarantino. I've seen most of his films. Um, if I haven't, I will definitely make a video on them. So the movie, I'm just going to start out with giving my my rating. So I actually wrote this on Twitter and I put that it was my first time watching Tarantino's movie, Django Unchained, and that was a great movie. It was two hours and 45 minutes long. It was a long one. Um, I gave it an 8.5 out of 10 on Twitter. Um, I guess the reasons I would say, um, why there's no such thing as perfect score on anything, um, but I gave it an 8.5 because it didn't feel long to me, but at one point I paused the movie and I, uh, I was like, man, there's still another hour left. I think I was at an hour and 40 minutes in at that point. And honestly, to me, it didn't feel that long. Those first hour 40. But it was definitely a very good movie. Um, I love the story. You know, Tarantino's big on dialogue. Um... The dialogue was great between Django and Dr. King Schultz. Um, I love Leonardo DiCaprio's character. You know, he's just one of those guys you like love to hate. But I think that's what makes a good antagonist is just you despise them. And it's like you're not rooting for them to die necessarily. But when his character got shot, I was just like, nice, you know? Um, there's a lot of Tarantino-isms, I guess. You know, he's very gory. The dialogue, like I said. Um, I don't want to say the movie's predictable, because it's not at all. I didn't see certain things coming, you know? When... Uh, they go to that first plantation and uh, Django kills the, the three brothers. I did not see that coming. Um, I thought they were just going to maybe have a shootout, maybe kill one of them, and then move on from there. Uh, and what I really didn't see coming was the scene right after that when they leave that plantation and they're setting up... Um, their little carriage and they rig it with dynamite and um, I knew the what was his name uh, I can't remember his name but the plantation owner I did not see him like rounding up all his gang of people and going and trying to kill them too but it was pretty funny because it's like they had the little the bag scene of everyone you know, talking about, all oh, these bags suck, I can't see, I ruined mine, I made the holes too big, moves around when I ride anyway. Um, and then the main guy, he's like, yeah, well, the horses can see. Um, and then Jonah Hill's, like, small little, I don't want to say it's a cameo, but he's just in there for that, like, those five minutes, not even five minutes, or 
I just thought it was funny. I like Jonah Hill. Um, but yeah, so that scene was pretty funny. And then when the dynamite went off, was it dynamite or uh, it was explosives? And then Django shot the main guy as he's riding away. That was that was pretty awesome for his like first shot and. Then uh, Christoph Waltz characters like, oh, not bad for a rookie or something like that. And then when they find Leonardo DiCaprio's character, and they have that initial like talk about the Mandingos and everything, and they're having they're watching the fight going on. I thought that was an interesting scene. And uh, like I said, Leonardo DiCaprio was just kind of like. He didn't steal the show, but he stole, like, every scene I feel like he was in. Just because he has that kind of, uh, aura about him as an actor. He's just, he can steal scenes, you know. And he wasn't even, I'm sorry, I don't want to say he wasn't a main character because he was a very integral character. But he was, up until that point, uh... It was like the Django show, you know? Um, but I like that scene when I had the two guys fighting. And then they kind of talk him in and fool him into getting him to invite them back to Candyland. And then the way from... Where were they? Wherever they were in that scene going to Candyland. I enjoyed like the interaction between Django and the Leonardo DiCaprio's character. And then how he was I don't want to say he was acting like he's better than the slaves that were there because, you know, in essence he not that he was still a slave at that point, but it wasn't too long ago that that was him, you know. And he was kind of having a back and forth and Christoph Waltz's character just kind of got got mad and was like, I need to talk to him real, really fast. And that was pretty funny. But he was like, you need to calm the down, you know. You get a little too carried away with your character. And that's something else I like too. Like, he tells them in the beginning, you know, we're going to be playing characters and don't break your character. And I feel like he... he Jamie Foxx did that really well as Django. Is like he's playing a character of like this badass, and not not that he's not a badass, but in the beginning, you know, he's just like some slave who just wants to get his wife back, and then like he turns into a badass because he's pretending to be this character for so long, and then he keeps it up, pretending to be like the expert on Mandingos and their whole fighting ring, but. I really enjoyed the movie. Um, I'm probably going to do another review on Glorious Bastards. That's another one of my favorite Tarantino movies. You know, I, before I was into watching a lot of movies, I was I would just watch movies because, you know, they were either interesting or whatever. And I remember in Glorious Bastards when it was out on DVD, one of my cousins had it and we... Just watched it a lot, and so that's kind of how like I got into Tarantino, like unknowingly. Like I've probably seen his other movies when I was younger, but I just didn't know what they were and who he was until I got older and I started watching more. You know, I watched Pulp Fiction for the first time. Um, I was probably like 19 or 20 when that happened, and I've watched it once or twice more since. Um, but yeah, I think it's kind of appropriate to start this off with the Tarantino movie. Um, like I said, I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. You know, the length for me, like I said, it was kind of long. I don't mind long movies. This, It's just... I don't mind long movies. I just... You know, scratch that. Give it a 9 out of 10. You know, because I'm over here complaining about time and everything going on in the world, 
that's all I have, you know. School's going to be over in like two and a half weeks for me. And then I'm going to have all the time in the world and the way we're looking at this quarantine. I'll probably still be doing this, you know, kill time. It's something I've been wanting to do for a really long time. Um, I'm wearing the hat, you know, inside. Oh, what an a-hole, you know. But I got quarantine hair, quarantine patchy beard going on. Um, I'm recording this on my MacBook Pro that I've had for five years. Six years. Six and a half. Um, using Beats because I don't have a proper setup. It's the only headphones I have with the mic. Hopefully the quality comes out. Hopefully this is even catching the recording. I don't know. I have to do this 12 minute video all over again. But um, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Comment on any movies I should watch. Um, whoever's watching this, this is going to be my first video for sure. If I upload it, um, I will do Inglorious Bastards, I think, next. Um, and after that, we'll see what else I got. Thanks for watching.